Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is going to be a pad I call Andromeda. It sounds very sci-fi, futuristic kind of thing. And we don't really have too many pads on the channel. I kind of want to change that. So with this one here, there's an interesting spot I hope you're going to notice. There's a slight spot where it introduces a little bit of distortion, which is kind of nice for this patch. So listen to that. And with that being said, here is the pad. All right, I think you get the idea. If you like the patch, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So this patch here is actually quite more in depth than you would think or that meets the eye. A lot of thought went into this, so forgive me if I maybe miss one or two parameters, but it's always available for free download in the video description below. So let's design or let's let's dive into this patch and see how it was created. So we're going to be using two parts here, A and B. So let's turn off B for now and kind of let's just first focus on A and see what's happening. So first thing we notice as this pitch here is down one octave, so we bring the slider, yours might be one, bring this up to two, which is dividing the pitch, bringing it down one octave. We have a little bit of vibrato here at 10 cents, so just a very subtle characteristic. And the thing with pads too is a lot of tiny subtleties become a big difference once everything is said and done. And a lot of it's the change over time is really the key with the pads as well. So that being said, we have a saw wave here on the left-hand side. And then over here on the right, we're using the crude low pass, and this frequency is at 34%, and we're not using any resonance here for that as well. Order of unison is going to be 5 at blur, the pan is going to be all the way at 100%, the pitch thickness is 38%, and the phase for this one is 50%, so it should be default at 50 now, as we see here, this pitch vibrato depth here. So this is going to be this knob here, this depth. We always can right click this and you can always go to edit articulator, which is basically bringing us to this window right here. And this is on, it's not on tempo because I didn't want this pad to be locked into a tempo, but this is basically just this graph kind of going upwards. And then in Harmer here, we can always click this down menu here and see all what we've changed here as well. So we have the volume here, and this is kind of a very typical ADSR shape, I guess, but a much longer attack here. So you can generally just feel it by ear, you know, pads, long attack, pretty long release. The sustain is kind of up to you, but this is kind of the overall shape that I went with right here. And then moving on from this volume here, we also did the pitch for broad depth, where we just talked about this upward ramp right here. And then we also did the global EQ. So if you're ever confused about the global or local EQ, I have the Harmer whole series in case you want to learn how to use a synth in the video description below. But basically, this is a cool EQ because this happens over this whole spectrum and we can kind of draw in these shapes because with this patch, a lot of that low end was kind of a little overbearing. So if we put our mouse around here, we can kind of see on the top left hand side where this is at. So this is about 178 Hertz right here through about 269. So cutting that mud, cutting some of this right here at about, what does it say, 659. Because once everything kind of comes in, it becomes a little bit much. So we are using a little bit of global EQ, to EQ right here as well. Next, we're going to be using the phaser here on the classic setting. The mix is going to be at 60% with 59. The offset's right up and down at noon. Speed's going to be 32. And that's about it for the part A. Now, if we switch over to part B and listen to B and see what's happening over here. And we can always click back and forth here to see kind of what's happening as well right here. Now you might notice some of these harmonizer knobs are moving, but there is no amount because I tried some harmonizer, but I didn't feel like it was actually uh, useful for this patch. Now we can tell easily with this B, we're going to always generally start with this random all the way to the left. And as we flip flop, we can kind of see what we're doing because with synths like these, sometimes it's hard to forget a small knob that you moved every so often. We're going to be using some tremolo here at 26%. So this part really, in a nutshell, is kind of controlling that focus kind of sound, whereas A is kind of controlling that low-end droning kind of sound, and those both together work very well. So for this one, we're going to have the keyboard tracking at 100% as opposed to the other one, which wasn't crude low pass, and this frequency is going to be at 44%. Order unison of 9, and the, the thickness is going to be a little higher, 59%, the pan all the way at the top, and this is also 50 as well. 
and then no phaser for part B. We will be using resonance at low pass at 24. Now for this one, we have a couple other stuff selected here on our little tips here. So we have the volume, which is slightly different than B if you kind of look at that here, because these two sounds are not necessarily going to be the same attack to case sustain release. So they kind of change and they're different over time, which is what I was talking about in the beginning, because with a pad, you kind of want things changing and moving and moving volume and sustain. And this one's interesting because it attacks, and then it decays, and then the decay kind of goes a little upward, which is weird. And then there's a sharp upwards and then it sustains here and then it drops off. So it's kind of a strange shape if you think of it that way. Next up, we're gonna have the filter one frequency. So this is kind of just moving this knob a little bit. It's a small little change, but it definitely does add some characteristic because you do wanna change the filter frequency over time and kind of let some frequencies in and kind of maybe take them away and so on and so forth. So we are adjusting that filter one frequency right there. Now the filter one resonance mount, we're also doing that as well with this shape of, this shape of a curve here, starting at the bottom, kind of ascending as this little arc and then stopping right here. And we can see that reflected here in this graph. As it gets brighter in those certain sections, that's really the resonance at work right there. Next up, we have the unison pitch thickness. Now, this is very interesting here because we have this kind of up shape going here. And it mo as it moves through the envelope, it kind of changes that pitch thickness in time. So it's kind of automating that thickness knob up and down and kind of making things become a little bit more thick and out of tune as time goes on. And then it kind of brings it right back to the center. So that's why you have it right here. Now, if I hold down a note, we can see this going all the way, peaks up here at the top, it goes down, and then it repeats again. So you can hold down this note for a long time and there's always going to be change, changes going on. It's not like you press a note and then it finally becomes to a static spot and it keeps going, which makes pads boring. So having this set as a loop is very helpful so we can hold down this note for a long time and it's still going to be changing things and moving the sound around. So we always want to right click this and then we have loop start and then at the end here you right click that and go to sustain loop end to create a loop within an envelope graph. And it looks like that's all for this part right here. Now let's dive into the effects here and see what's going on. So we have a little bit of chorus order at three. The depth is 50%, the chorus speed 57. This uh, chorus spread here is gonna be, or not spread, I was on the wrong one. The chorus delay is gonna be a 6%, the spread 100%, the cross minus 25 in the mix 41. And with this one here, we're doing a lot of processing here within the synth. And one of the main things too, when I said at the beginning, this little distortion here, that's going to be happening with soft saturation. The amount's going to be 65%. This ASIM is zero. The wet is at 50. The mix, distortion mix zero, but the high cut's going to be 33488. So, which is kind of an interesting amount. We're not really actually using this. So, just in case you didn't know that, but this is going to be that distortion that it kind of almost crackles at the top end sometimes. It makes it sound a little bit more interesting. Then we have the delay on Pong, and this input volume is going to be 70%. The filter on the bottom here is not going to be used, but on the top it is used at almost 7,000 hertz at 6,943. 6, Moving on to the feedback, 48%. The uh, delay time, 3, and the stereo offset is going to be 25. Now moving on to the reverb, it's going to be F here for this style. It's going to be on here with this little button, the reverb low cut off. The top one is going to be 11,516 hertz. The pre-delay is at 48 milliseconds, the size 40, the diffusion 100%, the reverb decay 3,313 milliseconds. So quite a lot of decay there, which is a pad you want the reverb to kind of sit around and hang out for a little while. The high dampening is at 5K and the wet is about 60%. And we're not using compression for this pad for this patch because the pad, I don't feel like it needs to be compressed. It has to start low, has to be loud, has to move around. So it's kind of more of a dynamic type of sound. So I didn't leave the compression on for, I turned it off for this patch as well. Now on the EQ as well, on the channel here, if we look here, this is basically just a standard type of cutting off some low end, maybe bringing up some of this, bringing down some of this mud here that kind of gets a little overwhelming. And that's basically it. So this patch is quite involved with both parts here, kind of mixing them together within the graphs with different shapes. But that's the kind of idea with pads. They seem to take a little bit longer to make if you're making one, because you always want to have a lot of things moving at different times to really make it feel alive and like something's moving. So with that being said, let's listen to the pad again and play us out and thank you for watching.
See you in the next one.